You probably haven't played this game. Today, we are playing Auto Medlista. Now, I think the easiest way to kind of explain this game, it's a mix of Gran Turismo, Wangan Midnight, and Initial D with arcade physics. And when I'm saying arcade physics, I mean like arcade machine physics. It's a very weird game, and you guys will see that in a minute. I've tried to record this video three times now. Three times. And each time it's gone wrong. So hopefully... We can do good. Right, so you've got a bunch of modes. You've got Garage Life, which is kind of the main mode. You've got Arcade, and then you can obviously go online. Don't think that's going to quite work in 2017. Garage Life. Now, like I said, I've tried to record this video three times. So I've already started a bit of the career mode. I haven't done any races in it yet because I wasn't originally planning to do that, but I think I will anyway. Uh, as you can see, our garage is called The Boys. We've got an R32 in the background, which, fun fact, has the exact same rims that my... um my uh, Suzuki Swift had on. Those are the exact same ones. Rest in peace, baby girl. Anyway, there's a lot of customization we can do in this game. We can actually even change um, the type of like layout we have in our garage. So if we go over here, we can see we can add items. We can like get posters and stuff. And then as well as that, we can actually change the backgrounds and stuff. I'm not going to mess around with any of that in this video because I don't want to make this video awfully long. But you get what I mean. There's a lot of things you can do in this game. As well as that, you can also tune cars. So you've got the easy tune-up option, which is kind of similar to Neves 2015's, you know, grip sliders, except it's menus. And I think it works a bit better, to be honest. Um, and then you, we can also actually upgrade the car with officially licensed parts. Now, there's not as many as there would be in, say, Initial D. I mean, and it, well, yeah, Initial D would be an example of that. Um, and, and, you know, Need for Speed and stuff. Uh, and, and Midnight Club, for that matter. But there is a few options. Obviously, you've got to unlock some of the some of the options. This game is very heavily based on unlocking things. Um, you know, unlocking tracks, unlocking customization parts. And obviously, because this is a new save, we don't have a lot of those things. So I've kind of kept the car relatively stark, not too much. But if you do want to see me customize the car, we can do that in a future episode. I don't know what happened to my original save. I think it must have got corrupted or something because I swear I had one on this memory card. But for whatever reason, it's not with us. Now, with that being said, we're going to get straight into a race. And like I said, this is a completely fresh save. So we've got Oscar Highway, um, we've got the US Speedway, and Rocco Hill. Okay, so here we go on Rocco Hill. Like I said, I don't really know where this is, to be honest. I've, I've not really got a clue where we are. But you're going to see what I mean. This game is very weird. The art style, very different. Uh, you, I'll just let the game play and you, you'll see. One thing I've also figured out is that the manual in this game is near impossible to use unless you're a genie. And I'm just not a genie. Now... I'm not sure if you guys can tell what I meant by the physics being a bit weird and it looking just weird. Ah, what a dick! What are you what are you doing? I'm gonna cut you on the inside. Ah there was no space there. What was I doing? Right now, this is a PS2 game. This is a PS2. And to be honest, with the art style, I think this is a pretty good look PS2 game. Keep going, 32. You've got this. Oh my god, I'm basically a god. Honestly, one of the most underrated PS2 games I think I've ever played. Um, I didn't really know about this until. I just span out. Yeah, this is one of those games, it's easy to pick up, hard to master. You can actually spin out from drifts. It's not like Criterion Drifting, where it doesn't, you know, require any counter steer. You need to counter steer, but it's not like, it, you don't need to be a car guy to do this. Like, it's not that hard. You don't need to be a, a seasoned gamer. It's like one of those games, easy, easy to pick up, hard to master sort of thing. And it makes me think, why did this game die off so quickly? Because it seems like it's fully branded, I, I mean, it, um, it obviously didn't sell well, otherwise it would have carried on doing it. But it just looks like a pretty well-polished game. Come over here, you yellow boy. I didn't mean that in a racist way. I would have realised that could actually come across. Oh, for fuck's sake. Are we going to call him yellow boy now? <laughs> yellow boy! Oh, look at me. With the speed I've got, I had to break because I didn't want to hit you. I really feel sorry for you as it is. Right, you've just slowed me down all the way. Move out my way. And we've won. Stay woke! You pretty much saw what there is to see with the racing in this game. It's pretty cool, it's different, it's interesting, it's exciting. And that's something which you can't really say for a lot of games, to be honest. Um, you know, the way the game progresses, again, is very different, very cool. Um, and it's one thing that I, I don't really know why this game isn't really around in, in 2017. We need more games like this. We need more games like this with actual progression and like... It doesn't even, you don't need, this is proof that you don't need a story to make a good racing game. I really should play more of this because I didn't actually find out about this game until recently. But, you know, just how well made it is and how robust it is just proves that, you, you know, you don't need a lot of things to make a good solid racing game. It's bare bones, but it's not bare bones, if that makes sense. It's got a lot of features and a lot of things to the game. 
and it's not like it's not that complicated Let's go to another race and see what the USA highway thing was like because I'm intrigued to say the least here we go US Speedway uh, Lapo Two. I keep doing Japanese. The Japanese game makes sense. I'm speaking Japanese. Jap boy. Jap boy. Right here we go on the speedway, and this time, as you can see, the car list has changed up a bit. It's not so ja so much Japanese, like full-on Japanese. I think that was a Corvette we had in front of us. We had something else behind us. Was it a Dodge, a Mustang? I think it was a Cobra Mustang. Um, so you know, the car list in this game is pretty, you know, like different, very like there's a, there's a high varied car list in this game. If you're looking for European, you know, Clio's and stuff, you're not going to get that. But I think if you're a if you're a car guy, there's going to be at least one one car in here which will tickle your tickle your testicles. I don't like driving in circles, to be honest. Um, it's just not something I'm relatively interested in. But with how the physics work in this game, it's kind of like a pendulum effect. Not near like Need for 2015. It's very very different. Um, you can actually spin out on this on this like NASCAR track. I have done it before, um, and it you know it's. Like now, I'm losing control of it now. I'm losing control of it now. Please don't die. This this game makes driving in circles actually relatively fun, and I don't feel that, that it just does. I feel like we've won this race. We're gonna keep going. Don't die. Don't spin. Don't spin. Don't spin. Don't spin. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Go down in the rev. Down in the revs. Right. I don't know how we've managed to win that because I thought I did relatively shit, but somehow we've won that race. Yay. Don't really know what else there is to say about this game. I feel like I've said everything that needs to be said. It's just, it's just a good game and you should play it if you have a PS2 or, or an Xbox, original Xbox. Hopefully this is one game that can come to um, backwards compatibility for Xbox One with the original Xbox games coming back. The only the kind of reason I don't think that would happen is licensing and also Capcom made this game in, in conjunction with Sega, I believe. Um, so maybe there's going to be issues there, I don't know. But you should play this game if you haven't already. It's very, very good. There's so many things that I haven't even shown showed you yet like the car list I haven't showed you the car list I haven't showed you the customization it's one of those games like I said I found it like a, a year or two ago and I never got around to playing it till now and you won't regret it if you play this game it it's a good game so that's been it for me today I hope this video wasn't awfully short I'm not sure whether how if this video is gonna turn out whether long or short and I apologize if it is short if not you can just ignore everything I said but that's been it for me today I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you go ahead and hit the like subscribe I will see you guys in the next one you guys have an awesome stay safe and peace Oh, oh, oh.